In this video, we're going to see how to apply a different style sheet based on where a page is viewed, whether it's viewed in the browser on a traditional PC, viewed on a mobile device with a smaller screen, or viewed for printing. And that's one really good reason why we like to keep our styles linked in a linked style sheet instead of directly embedded with our content. So an HTML page should really just have content and the styles should be in this external style sheet. This is actually fairly straightforward to do. We simply need to make two more copies of our style sheet in this case because we want to support print and mobile. So I'm going to take our style sheet and choose save a copy as. We'll choose the same directory, but I'll make one called print. And then once again, save a copy as. The other one we'll call mobile. So right now it's this st same style sheet just duplicated twice. One thing we're going to see is that when we have them separated into print and mobile, we can make them very specific to print and mobile. Now, back in our HTML page, we want to link to these other sheets as well. So I'm going to duplicate this link tag that I have. And on one, I'm going to change it to print. And on the other, I'm going to change it to mobile. Now, we need to tell the viewing device when to pick which sheet. It won't know based on the name that I've called the sheet. So we need to use one more thing, which is called media. So for print, we're going to say media equals print. And what we'll see is that that is automatically selected if we want to print or print preview this page. For mobile, we're going to say media equals, and then double quote, screen and paren max dash device dash width. 480px. So we're saying maximum 480 pixels. And then terminate the quote on that. I have seen other medias like mobile. I, I've seen that used before, but I've not had a lot of success with it. The most success I've had with having a mobile friendly style sheet is to do screen and then set the max device width. So in other words, this style sheet will be used provided the device width is less than 460 480 px. Now let's save and let's see what we can change. Let's go over to the print CSS. One thing is when we're printing we want to have a white background. So let's do FF, 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 which is all white. Uh, that text is fine. Now the top nav, does navigation serve any purpose on a printed document? No it doesn't actually. So we're going to change this to display none. And that means turn off the top nav entirely. As a matter of fact, we might want to go ahead and make something called print only, which is something that will show up only when we're printing out this page. So let me go ahead and make a class called print only. And uh, we can just say font family just like this. We'll go ahead and copy this font family and now save. And now we can go back to our about us and down towards the bottom. Maybe we can do a print only. Let's see. We will put it. Um, we'll put it within content. So the idea is that this print only only appears when we're in print mode, which means we need to turn it off in the normal style. So let's use the trick we used before with display none to say don't display print only when we are in the normal web view or when we're in the mobile view. So right now I'm in the, uh, on the normal web view and we'll say display none. Display none is a great trick for having things that conditionally display. And when you combine that with the ability to conditionally use a style sheet based on the media type, it becomes a very powerful mechanism. Now let's take a look at mobile CSS. We'll go ahead and add in that display none for print only because we don't need that to show up when we're watching, looking at this on a mobile device. Top nav is good and who we are is good. One more thing I'll do, when we're in a mobile device, we typically don't want to overload the user with too much information to read. So I want to turn off this div class equals junk. Now notice that's class, not ID. So the selector is a little bit different. So the selector for an ID is the pound symbol, but the selector for a class is the period symbol. So I'll say period junk, open curly, close curly. And then inside of this, we'll say display none. One more change I'm going to make. In the About Us, I went ahead and put a print only ID at the top. I'm going to remove it from the bottom. Reason why I did that is in the print only version, I'm removing the header. So I'm simply using this as a replacement for a header. So in other words, top nav is turned off during print. 
Uh, print only is turned on only during print. So these two are essentially mutually exclusive. One more thing I want to do in the style CSS for the print only we have display equals none. There's a possible collision here because on our page we said to use style CSS as the default and then print CSS if we're in print mode. Well, it's possible that these two could essentially merge together when we're in print mode and it takes styles out of style CSS and overrides them only with the ones that are present in print CSS. So in other words, it could inherit this display none from style CSS where I actually want it to display in the print version. So I'm going to override it and say display block. That way, even if it does inherit the display none from styles, as we see here, it knows to overwrite it with display block and go ahead and show it. So let's take a look. I'll refresh our page and you notice that it works as it always has. And when we're in the web mode here, you notice that we have our menu on top and we don't have that print only thing that says source plain places. Now I'm going to hold control P, which brings up print preview mode. And that is smart enough to apply our print only style sheet. So you see now the background color is gone. And instead of having navigation across the top, we have source plain places. Now we probably should take this form off as well because the form enter plant name and submit that doesn't make any sense in our printed page. As a matter of fact, I can't imagine any form that would look appropriate on a printed page. So I can just knock out the entire form tag with display none. Now we refresh, reload the print preview with control P and you notice that that input form is no longer there and the top nav is no longer there as well. So now we have our content properly styled to be printed out. Let's take a look at one more. We know that when we're in mobile look and feel, it's supposed to drop all of the text down below. So if we go to control shift I, which is developer mode, we can test out several different look and feels. As a matter of fact, take a look at the text down here, which should disappear when we're in mobile mode. And watch what happens as I shrink, 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 and eventually get below 480. As soon as I get below 480, our different style sheet applies, the mobile style sheet applies, and you notice it knocks out that junk class that we had here, which is extraneous text that we wouldn't need on mobile. Of course, there's a lot more we could do. We could change the background color and several other things, but you can see now that we're able to use that media selector to choose among several different style sheets based on how the user is interacting with us. So this has been a look at the media selector in CSS. I hope this video has been helpful and I look forward to reading your comments. Thank you.